A pleasant day to everyone. We are the group 2 from BSCPE 1A and our discussion for this time would be all about the chemistry of water. To start off, I'm Axel Clodem Delgado and let's talk about water chemistry. Of all chemicals, water is among the most versatile. Besides the fact that water exists in nature in all three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, it also occupies approximately 75% of the earth and makes up roughly 78% of the human body. Despite being an essential substance, it is surprisingly simple in its structure. Water chemists research the effect of water on other elements in different systems and vice versa. Water chemists also contribute to the creation and application of processes and policies to control areas of impact. So the structure of water, the structure of water molecule is made up of one molecule of oxygen and two molecules of hydrogen abandoned covalently. So because of the higher electronegativity of the oxygen atom, the bonds are polar covalent. Because electro electronegativity is the amount of pull that the members of covalent bond exert on their shared electrons. Covalent bonds are bonds that are formed when two atoms share their electrons to become more stable. So, gusto nilang full valence shell. So, ito yung oxygen, which is the red. Tapos, itong dalawang white na to, yung hydrogen. Oxygen has ele uh, negative electric charge. And dalawang hydrogen, meron silang positive charge. So, formation of hydrogen bonding. So, uh, when an atom share an electron with one another atom from a molecule, the atom with higher electronegativity, uh, nag-share sila ng electrons closer to itself than to other atoms. Since one atom gave an electron to keep itself uh, near, tas yung atom receives a partial negative charge, yun yun, which is hindi siya fully charged dahil sa molecule is being neutral then para mabalance yung negative at saka yung positive regions so more electrons is equal to negative charge fewer electrons is equal to positive charge dahil dito hydrogen bond is a is a rather strong force of two atoms instead of only one uh, nakoconsider sila as bond between them so, yun ang tawag sa hydrogen bond. At yung hydrogen bond, ito yung isang special type ng dipole-dipole interactions that nag exist siya only in the molecule. No? A hydrogen bond to a small highly electronegativity atom. So, yung hydrogen bonding, isa rin siyang uh, interaction involving a hydrogen located between a pair of atoms. So, yung nakikita nyo dito sa right side ng ano natin illustration. This is a molecule, another molecule tapos yung nakabagit na sa kanila yun ang hydrogen bond. So, ito rin hydrogen bond din to. Molecular vibration of water. Um, dito naman, atoms in molecule never at rest and for each type of molecule, there are some normal vibration modes. Ito yung tinatawag natin symmetric stretching, bending, at saka yung asymmetric stretching. Makikita natin dito sila sa figure. So, yung motion nila, ito, parehas na hydrogen, magkasabay silang nag-vibrate, opposite yung oxygen. Dito naman, dahil bend siya, yung hydrogen nila, hindi siya nagpo-push and pull. But, kung ano sila, uh, more on scissor motion sila. Dito naman, same sila sa asymmetric kaso, uh, ang hydrogen hindi sabay. Alternate din sila. So, para makalculate naman ang degrees of freedom natin, um, dito sa degrees of freedom, yung label na 
ini-indicate ng particular degree of freedom is for an atom, it will have 3 degrees of freedom dahil x, y, and z coordinates sila. So, yung degree of freedom of every atom is equal to 3 and for molecule, molecule with n is equal to 3n siya. So, para makalkulik natin yung water for an example, yung number of water is equal to next is equal to 3 dahil 1 oxygen atom and 2 hydrogen atoms kaya 3 yung degrees of freedom niya kung substitute natin siya dito sa nonlinear molecules dahil lang water uh, water is a nonlinear molecule so yan yung formula niya so 3n multiplied by 3 minus 6 ang result natin dun is 3 so, dahil 3 ang results, ito yung tatlong vibration modes. Symmetry of water molecule. Dito naman, sa symmetry of water molecule, um, the water molecules are rather symmetric in that they are two mirror planes of symmetry, one containing all three atoms and one perpendicular to the plane passing through the bisector of angle HOH angle. So, so the symmetry of elements of water are E, Yung E is the identity operation, is the operation of doing nothing in the position of atom and it will always be remain the same. Tapos yung axis C2, ito yung axis na only in water molecule na nag-appear siya sa red ball. At nirepresent niya yung oxygen, that's yung two ball na white, yung hydrogen. Tapos yung nakikita natin dito sa gitna nila, ayan, yung parang rod. Ito yung imaginary C2 axis na nagpa-pass through oxygen atom at nagbabipercates nagbabipercates sa 2 OH bonds. Also, isa rin siyang molecular, uh, molecular plane which contains oxygen atoms and 2 hydrogen atoms. So, uh, sa plane na to, we consider that a plane, the plane bifurcates to oxygen atoms, hydrogen bonds, and it passes through oxygen and this is a perpendicular mirror plane. Ito siya. Mirror plane, that is a plane containing oxygen of two-headed atoms and we get the appearance on the right side. So, ito siya yung two mirror plane niya. Compositions of water. When we say compositions of water, uh, these are the elements or chemical substances found in water. Do you know that there would be no life on earth if there were no water? Water is the one of the essential things in the world wherein both plants and animals and humans need water to live. It is a valuable compound on earth. Although water molecules are, are simpler structure, but the physical chemical properties of it is extraordinarily complicated because water is made up of chemical elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, and other gases. Furthermore, water is a molecule made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Its chemical formula is H2O. Water has surface tension, so a little, wa a little, a little water can make drops on a surface rather than always spreading out to wet the surface. The figure depicts that uh, water is a transl translucent fluid that shapes the streams, lakes, oceans, and rain of the earth. Uh, water is a chemical substance with the chemical formula H2O. Uh, one water molecule has two hydrogen atoms covalently bound to a single oxygen atom. Uh, in all three common states of matter, water exists in nature solid, liquid, and gas. Uh, thus, the percent composition of water by mass is 11.90% hydrogen and 88.81% oxygen. In addition, to calculate the percent composition of water, there are certain steps to follow. First, find the molar mass of all the elements in the compound in grams per mole. Then, find the molecular mass of the entire compound. Divide the component's molar mass by the entire molecular mass and now you will now have a number between 0 and 1. 
Then multiply it by 100% to get percent composition. Good day everyone, my name is John Christian Escudal and today I will discuss the physical and chemical properties of water. But first, let us define what is water. Water is the most important substance on Earth. Earth is composed of 71% of water, which is stated that it is the only planet that living things can live. The Earth is a water place, but just how much water exists on, in, and above our planet? About 71% of the Earth's surface is covered with water, and the oceans hold about 96.5% of all Earth's water. Most of the human body is water. With an average of roughly 60%, the amount of water in the body changes slightly with age, sex, and hydration. We all know that water is essential for health and is necessary for numerous bodily functions. This includes our temperature regulation, cellular, cellular function, and waste removal. Physical properties of water First is the melting point. The pH changes when solid state turns into liquid state. The melting point of water is 0 degrees Celsius. As the energy in the molecule increases from a rise in temperature, the molecules start moving faster. Soon, they have enough energy to break free of the rigid structure and start moving around more easily. The matter becomes liquid. Boiling point. It is the temperature when the liquid state turns into a gas state. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. The high, did you know that the higher the pressure, the higher boiling point of water? At lower the pressure, the boiling point of water comes down. So the result in decreasing the boiling point at higher altitude and increase in boiling of water. Density It is the mass of the unit volume of a material substance. The density of water is 997 kg per cubic meter. Specific high heat capacity an ability of water to absorb large amount of heat, a property of water that is useful in life because many living things depend on water. Water also has the highest specific heat of any liquid. It requires 4.184 joules to raise temperature from 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. This is the most energy required to raise a liquid by 1 degree. Water's high heat specific capacity is very useful to life. Surface tension a property of water to hold its molecules and form a bond. The molecules attract to each other and become close to one another unless there's a force of light. Proper, uh, surface tension is the property of liquid surface displayed by its acting as if it were stretched elastic membrane. This phenomenon can be observed in the nearly spherical shape of small drops of liquid and soap bubbles. Because of this property, Insects can stand on the surface of water. Next are the chemical properties of water. First one is the ionization. A property of water that includes electrically charged ion and free electrons that also protect against free radical damage. This is where water molecule H2O deprotonates or loses the nucleus of one of its hydrogen atoms to become hydro hydroxide ion OH negative. The hydrogen nucleus H plus immediately protonates another water molecule to form hydronium H3O plus. It is an example of autoprotolysis and exemplifies the amphoteric nature of water. pH level of water. The pH level is a measure of how acidic basic of liquid or a solution. The water's pH level is 7, which is considered neutral. It may change when an element reacts with its molecules. What pH is safe for drinking water? The recommended pH level for drinking water is around 6.5 to 8.5 pH level. As you can see the table here, the type of water and their pH level. Top water varies around, typically around 7.5. Distilled reverse osmosis water, 5 to 7. Common bottled waters, 6.5 to 7.5 pH level. Bottled waters labeled as alkaline, 8 to 9. Ocean water, about 8. And acid rain, 5 to 5.5 pH level. Oxygen, oxygen solubility. A property of water to dissolve oxygen. 
water solubility of oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius and pressure is equals to 1 bar is at 40 milligram per liter of water. Solvent action. What is water is known as the universal solvent. It is the ability of water to, to dissolve large amount of solutes than other solvent. Bag nga pa tinawag na universal solvent ang water. Uh, it is because it dissolves more substances than any other liquid. That's it. Uh, thank you so much. Once again, this is Jan Christian Escudel. God bless. Three forms of water. The properties of water. The most common compound on the Earth's surface is water. In the liquid, solid, and gaseous state in nature, water occurs at zero degrees Celsius and 1 atm of pressure. It is it dynamic equilibrium between the liquid and gas states. It is tasteless, odorless, and colorless liquid at room temperature. Ap approximately 25 degrees Celsius, in water, several substances dissolve and it is usually referred to as the universal solvent. So, uh, water can occur in three states, solid, ice, liquid, or gas bay for solid water ice is frozen water when water freezes its molecules move further apart making ice less dense than water water as a gas vapor is always present in the air around us Eco. so here's the chart of properties of water the phases of water Water can take various forms similar to many other substances, the type that is commonly meant by the word water. It is a liquid phase, the most common phase of the water on Earth. Liquid phase, also known as water. Water is mainly a liquid under normal condition, 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atm of pressure. This attribute could not be anticipated by its relationship to other gaseous hydrates in the oxygen family in the periodic table such as a hydrogen full side. The oxygen containing elements in the periodic table, nitrogen, fluorine, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine are all mixed with hydrogen to create a gases under normal condition. Water is a liquid rather than a gas since oxygen is more electronegative than the surrounding elements. With the exception of fluorine, oxygen attracts electrons even more intensely than hydrogen, resulting in a partial positive charge on hydrogen atoms and partial negative charge on oxygen atoms. The presence of this charge on both of these atoms gives a net dipole moment to the water molecule. The electrical attraction caused by this dipole between water molecules bring individual molecules closely together, making the molecules more difficult to distinguish the thereby raising the boiling point. This form of attraction is known as bonding with hydrogen. The water molecules are continu continually shifting in relation to each other and at intervals shorter than 200 femtoseconds the hydrogen bonds are continuously breaking and reforming 200 by 10 to 15 seconds. Cool. Arrangement of water molecules in the liquid phase. Water molecules align on the basis of their polarity forming hydrogen bonds referred to as one. This is the figure that we are talking about. So, liquid water is a fluid and wet. This is type of water we are most familiar with. In many cases, like washing, drinking, we use liquid water. Solid paste, also known as ice. The solid paste of water is known as ice and typically consists of hard, amalgamated crystals such as ice cube or, loose, or loosely accumulated granular crystals, such as snow. Unlike most other liquids, the solid state of water is less dense than its liquid form. Owing to the existence of it hexo hexagonal packing with, within its crystalline structure, this grill 
provides more space than when the molecules are in a liquid state. The hexagonal structure of ice as a naturally occurring inorganic solid with an ordered form. Ice is known to be a mineral. It has a normal crystalline structure based on the molecular structure of water consisting of, consisting of single oxygen atom covalently bound to two hydrogen atoms, HOH. So that is the chart that he's talking about. Okay. The fact that density of ice is less than that of liquid waters has the important consequence that ice flows. And there's the chart of density of what ice and water. The density of ice and water as a function of temperature. The solid state is the most compound denser than the liquid phase. Thus, the block of the solid would usually fall into a corresponding liquid. A cube of ice float in seawater, though since the ice is less solid than liquid water, the inset shows the curve is more detailed in the range 0 to 10 degree Celsius. Liquid water is the densest water at 4 degree Celsius. So the solid water, frozen water is ice. Its molecule shifts further apart as the water pieces, making ice less compact than water. This means ice is going to be lighter than the same amount of water. So ice is going to float in the water at 0 degrees Celsius and 32 degree Fahrenheit water pieces. <clears throat> gas phase, also known as water vapor. The gaseous phase of water is known as water vapor or steam. Is characterized by a clear cloud. Water also resides in a special fourth state called the supercritical fluid, which happens only under highly unheatable circumstances. As water reaches a particular critical temperature and a specific critical pressure, 647K and 22,064 MPa, the liquid and gas phase converge into a single homogeneous fluid phase that shares the properties of both gas and the liquid. So, so water is still present in the air surrounding us as a gas vapor. It cannot be noticed by everyone. Water transition from a liquid to a gas or water vapor as you heat water. We see it in a thin air cloud called steam as some of the water vapor cools. This steam cloud is a mini model of the clouds we see in the atmosphere. At sea level, at 100 degrees Celsius and 212 degree Fahrenheit, steam is generated. Tiny piece of dust in the air are connected to water vapor. In warm climate, it shapes raindrops, it freezes in lower weather, and creates snow or hail. Go. So, the water, all in all, or hydrological cycle, is a constant cycle in which water evaporates, travels in the air, becomes part of the cloud, falls as a drizzle back to earth, and then evaporates again. In a never ending loop, this repeats again and again. Water over and over again continues going and changing from a solid to a liquid to a gas. And so that's our report for three forms of water. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Physical characteristics of water. Introduction. The consistency of water is determined by the physical, chemical, and microbiological properties of water. Throughout the globe, these water quality properties are distinguished by wide heterogeneity. Throughout the globe, these water quality properties are distinguished by wide heterogeneity. Therefore, the quality of the natural sources of water used by various purposes should be calculated in terms of the basis criteria of water quality that have the greatest effect on the future use of water. 
Physical characteristics of water. The physical characteristics of the water, temperature, color, taste, scent, and so on, are determined by the scent of touch, hearing, smell, and taste. For example, temperature by touch, hue, float in the breeze, turbidity, and suspended solid by sight, and taste and smell by smell. Temperature. Water temperature influences some of the significant physical properties and characteristic of water. Thermal ability, mass, specific weight, viscosity, surface tension, specific conductivity, salinity and solubility of dissolved gases, and etc. Chemical and biological response rates are rising with rising temperatures. Reaction concentrations are typically assumed to double with a temperature rise of 10 degrees Celsius. The temperature of water in lakes, in lakes and river around the world ranges from 0 to 35 degrees Celsius. Like the temperature is a physical pictures that show how hot or cold water is because both heat and cold are subjective words. Temperature may further describe as a calculation of substance average thermal energy. As a flow of heat, this energy may be passed between substances. The water temperature may be altered by heat transfer. Whether the air, sunlight, another source of water thermal pollution. Temperatures around like 10 degrees Celsius are desirable for potable water. There should be no more than 25 degrees Celsius. Go. Color. Color in water is mainly a problem for the consistency of water for ethics purpose. Colored water gives the impression of being unfit to drink, even though the water may be completely safe for public consumption. Color, on the, ad on the other hand, may suggest the existence of organic substance such as algae or humid compounds. More recently, color had been used as a predictive measure of the occurrence of potentially harmful or poisonous organic materials in water. The color, from the point of view of health, the appearance of color in water is not objectionable but will be ruined the color of the clothes being cleaned. The basic color unit is the one created by dissolving one milligram of platinum cobalt in one gallon of distilled water. Taste and odor. Taste and scent are human <clears throat> impressions of consistency of the water. Human taste experience contains acidic, salty, sweet, and bitter. Rel relatively, basic compounds contain sour and salty flavors. However, more complex organic compounds produce sweet and bitter flavors. Human detect far more other tips than tastes. Organic materials dump directly into water, such as dropping leaves, runoff, and etc. Are causes of flavor and other producing compounds produced during biodegradations. Taste and odor, that the, a term called odor in, intensity is used to quantify the level of taste or odor present in a given water sample, which is related to the their sold odor or their sold odor number. Therefore, the water we ex examine is steadily mixed with other pre-water. And the combination is calculated under with the perception of odor by human observation is just loss. The their sold odor number is represented by number of times the sample is diluted. Turbidity. Turbidity is an indicator of the light transmitting properties of water and consists of suspended and collodial liquid. It's relevant for reasons of health and ethics. Turbidity. With the help of an instrument called a turbidity meter, turbidity can be easily calculated in the laboratory. In general, the concept of calculating the disturbance include the 
by the water sample in the passing of light rays is used by the turbidity meter. So. Solids. After the water has evaporated and residue is dried to constant weights at 103 degrees Celsius to 105 degrees Celsius. The total solids water content is known as remainder. The organic fraction is known to be related to the weight loss of residual residue after evaporation of the water and after combustion of the residue at temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. Vital solids can oxidize at temperature and release as methane. In a in an organic is reminiscent of inert ash, solid are categorized as settled solid. Suspended solid and filterable solids. Settling competent solids is the one that settles under the influence of the gravity. Solids and filterable solids are categorized on the basis of the size of the particles and the preservation of suspended solids by regular glass fiber filter. Water solids can be composed of inorganic or organic particles or insoluble liquids, oils or greases. Inorganic solids are pre prevalent in surface water, such as clay, silt, and other soil consistents. Organic materials are also consistent of surface water, such as plant fibers and biological solids, bacteria, algae cells, and etc. The next topic will be the chemical characteristics of water. The pH of water. In general, a water with a pH less than 7 is considered acidic, and with a pH greater than 7 is considered basic. The normal range for pH in surface water systems is 6.5 to 8.5, and for groundwater systems, 6 to 8.5. The pH of pure water or H2O is 7 at 25 degrees Celsius, but when exposed to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, this equilibrium results in a pH of approximately 5.2. Alkalinity of water. Alkalinity is the water's capacity to resist changes in pH that would make the water more acidic. It is also the protector of your health and piping when it comes to drinking water. Water's capacity is equal to buffering capacity. If increasing amounts of acids are added to a body of water, the water's buffering capacity is consumed. If additional buffering material can be obtained from surrounding soils and rocks, the alkalinity level may eventually be restored. What will happen when pH levels of water drop? Water with a low pH can be acidic, naturally soft, and corrosive. Acidic water can leach metals from pipes and fixtures such as copper, lead, and zinc. It can also damage metal pipes and cause aesthetic problems such as metallic or sour taste, laundry staining, or blue-green stains in sinks and drains. Water with a low pH may contain metals in addition to the before-mentioned copper, lead, and zinc, thus making it a health hazard not only for humans but also for aquatic life. The hardness of water. The hardness of water can be determined by the amount of dissolved calcium and magnesium in the water. Have you ever felt that your hands is still slimy after washing with soap and water? Then you may have felt the effects of hard water, literally the last time you washed your hands. Depending on the hardness of your water, you may have felt like there was a film of residue left on your hands. In hard water, soap reacts with the calcium to form soap, scum. The general guidelines for classification of waters are soft, slightly hard, moderately hard, hard, and very hard. You can refer to this table here by, uh, by the hardness the water hardness scale. As you can see, the classification is soft, slightly hard, moderately hard, hard, and very hard. Nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia in water. This is the nitrogen cycle. 
The nitrogen cycle is a chain of biological reactions with the that produces chemical results. Then, nitrogen cycle begins with fish waste material, which produces ammonia. Ammonia is very toxic to fish, and in the small confines of an aquarium could eventually kill them. But fortunately, ammonia is food for, nitri for nitrifying bacteria, which are always present in water. The, nitrifi the nitrifying bacteria eat the ammonia, producing nitrite. Other nitrifying bacteria eat the nitrite, produci producing nitrate. Since nitrate is relatively harmless to fish unless it accumulates in large quantities, the toxic effects of the ammonia and nitrite are cancelled out by the biological food chain. The nitrogen cycle is what keeps the chemical balance of water at life-sustainable levels for plants and fish. Phosphates in water. Nut nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus are essential for plant and animal growth and nour nourishment, but the overabundance of certain nutrients in water can cause a number of adverse health and ecological effects, such as soil erosion, algae blooms, Dead zones, dead fish resulting from dead zones can cause flu to humans and death to pets. Dissolved oxy oxygen or DO and biochemical oxygen demand or BOD. BOD represents the amount of oxygen consumed by bacteria and other microorganisms while they decompose organic matter under aerobic or ex oxygen is present conditions at a specified temperature. The presence of a sufficient concentration of dissolved, dissolved oxygen, or DO, is critical to maintaining the aquatic life and aesthetic quality of streams and lakes. As you can see here, BOD is present in the water. BOD serves as food for the bacteria, and the bacteria utilize oxygen when they consume BOD, and oxygen, oxygen is depleted in the water. Thus, in receiving streams, high BOD levels can cause depleted, dissolved oxygen, making it difficult for aquatic animals to survive. And that is the end of my Chemical Characteristics of Water report. Hi, I am Ivan Kailo, a Custoya, and today I will discuss about the biological characteristic of water. But first, let us define what it is. It is referred to a variety of living organisms that can be found in water. There are major groups of this, which include bacteria, viruses, plankton, protozoa, and fungi. But for the the first one is the bacteria. Comes from a Greek word rod or staff. The shape or characteristic of most bacteria. The arteria. This bacteria is a spherical, is a coxy, a rod shape, which is a bacilli, and the spiral, which is a spirilla. This bacteria is this bacteria is the smallest living things on earth, and there are two types of this: is the non-disease and the disease-causing bacteria, or also known as good are good bacteria. The example of the good bacteria is the yogurt, and the next is the viruses smaller than bacteria smallest biological structure to contain all the genetic mission necessary for production they cannot live by themselves so they require the host the host to keep their survival live and to keep the one example of these viruses are the are this coronavirus the next one will be the plant there are two types of plankton, the phytoplankton and the zooplankton. The first one is also known as algae. You cannot see them with your naked eye. So it required to use microscope to you see them. Most algae contain green pigment called chlorophyll and follow photosynthesis. So they required sunlight. The second one is the zooplankton like us they are the they use oxygen and release carbon dioxide these are the animal types of the plankton and there are three four types the plankton of this one they are the nematoids 
Waterflea, Cyclops, Rotifers, the simplest of multicellular animals aerobic. And the ne next one will be the Protozoa. These are the single cell animals, the lowest and the simplest form of animal life. They are bacteria eaters, thus destroyed pathogens. Destroyed pa so they are aerobic or facultative anaerobic. So they can live with or without. They are also free living or parasitic. Four classes based on motility. The Siltia. For circle. The next one will be, and the last one will be the swan Fungi. Fungi is an aerobic. They. Photosynthesis. Heratrophic. Heterotroph is a organism that cannot produce its own food. Instead, their sources of organic, like dead animals or corpse of a corpse of dead dead person. I mean, without fungi, the carbon cycle would cease, and organic matter could build up. Ideal conditions are high moisture and much age and so they they live in a wetlands or moisture surroundings or environment. The next one will be the fecal coliforms bacteria. These are the collection of relatively harmless relatively harmless microorganisms that live in large numbers in an intestine of a man in a warm cold blooded. This bacteria will be the kinds of the total coliform bacteria they can they can found in the found in the soil found water that has been influenced by the surface water and and the animal waste and as you can see these are the total coliform the fecal coliforms the the and the E. coli, which are the subunit, the subunit of it. The next one will be the biological oxygen demand for BOD in the water. Biochemical oxygen demand for BOD represent the amount of the oxygen and other microorganisms, other and the decomposed organic matter under aerobic condition at the specific temperature. As you can see in the image. The BOD will the brown circles and the oxygen will be the white circles and the second will be the green one will green bacteria and the third one will be the C the oxygen the bacteria utilize oxygen when they consume BOD in the water and that will be my report and thank you for the listening have a good day everyone so our topic for today is water solubility water solubility what is the meaning of water solubility water solubility is a measure of the amount of chemical substance that can dissolve in water at a specific temperature the unit of solubility is generally in mg per L or milligrams per liter or ppm parts per million. Water solubility is one of the most important properties affecting bioavailability and environmental fate of chemical substance. We have a importance about water solubility. What is water is called the universal solvent because it is capable of dissolving more substance than any other liquid. This is important to every li living thing on earth. It means that wherever water goes, either through the air, the ground, or through, through our both bodies, it takes along valuable chemicals, minerals, and nutrients. Next is definition of solubility. What is solubility? Solubility is the ability of a solid, liquid, or gases, gaseous, chemical, 
substance referred to as dilute to dissolve in solvent, usually a liquid, and form a solution. The solubility of a substance fundamentals depends on the solvent used, as well as temperature and pre pressure. The solubility of, of a substance in a particular solvent is measured by the concentration of the saturated solution. A solution is considered saturated when adding additional solute no longer increasing the concentration of the solution. In this picture, you see that the solubility as pictures here. Most, pre most prevalent bands are CC and CH, which are nonpolar. Solubility in water is low for many organic compounds. So, the solubility has importance in our environment because it can provide fundamental information necessary to make prediction of transport path waste in aqueous system. Water solubility, let's back, back again, water solubility Water solubility is the, is the key chemical property affecting the partitioning of a chemical to any other place in contact with water. Then, there is a water solubility unit. This is the unit of water solubility. You can see that we have a converting unit. So, ppm into mgl. As, we, as I said, earlier in the water soluble there's mg milligram per liter or parts per million converting about water solubility okay next oh. difference between mgl or milligrams per liter and ppm parts per million the parts per, per million or parts is the number of parts of a substance in a million parts of a solution or mixture for example, let's assume you want to measure the salinity of water. PPM is the number of salt parts per million of the entire solution, both water and salt. Then, MGL or milligram per liter is a measure of concentration which states how many milligrams of the substance can be found in a liter of the solution or mixture. Okay. In the next slide, you can see the example of Parts per million and milligram, milligram per liter. So, this is the converting ppm and mgl. Converting ppm to mgl. This is the steps that you can do to to make the problem solved. Let's choose oil with the density equal to 920 kilogram per mole cube. Determine the ppm value. For your solution, let's say you have created a solution with 1,230 ppm of oil. Use the following formula to, to find the MGL ratio. This is the following formula that we need, to, we need to do so that we can answer the question. This So, the milligram per liter said that the 1,230 ppm of oil multiply by the 920 of the density equal to 920 divided by 1000 it is the pip it is the given in the milligram per liter so you will get 1131.6 milligram per liter that's the formula by getting the milligram per liter ppm to milligram per liter it means that 1,230 ppm is equivalent to 1,131.6 milligram per liter of oil in water. Then, next is out, the opposite is how to get the converting MGL to ppm. Okay. Before we start, M, per 1 MGL or 1 milligram per liter is equal to 1 parts per million. So, this is the example. 1.8 milligram per liter chlorine is equivalent to 1.8 parts per million chlorine. They are the same equal. So, in other example, 
22.84 milligram per liter is equal to 22.84 parts per billion. That's how we need to do to get that converting EPM and MGN. I think in this study, you, le you learn a lot in this presentation. So I hope you understand and thank you. Hello, I am Axel Claude and Delgado from Group 2 and I'm going to discuss about acids, bases, and pH. First off, let's start by talking about acids and bases. In 1884, Swedish chemist Arrhenius defined acids as compounds that increase the hydrogen ion concentration in water or in an aqueous solution, while bases as compounds that increase the hydroxide ion concentration in water or in an aqueous solution. In 1923, Brunstad and Lowry defined acids as proton donors while bases as proton acceptors. In that same year, Gilbert Lewis defined acids as electron acceptors while bases as electron donors. The theory of Arrhenius had some limitations such as failing to explain why some substances that do not contain the hydroxide ion are still able to create basic solutions. The theory of Brunstad and Lowry took the theory of Arrhenius a step further, as a substance is no longer needed to be made up of hydrogen or hydroxide ions to be labeled as an acid or base, while the theory of Gilbert Lewis allowed chemists to predict a wider variety of acid-base reactions. Bases were also often referred to as alkaline. The amphoteric nature of water and autoionization. Water can act as both a bronzed acid and a base. Between two water molecules, one can give off a proton, leaving the hydroxide ion, and the other can accept this proton to become a hydronium ion. This reaction is referred to as the self-ionization or autoionization of water. This happens because of the amphiprotic nature of water. What amphiprotic means is that it can act as both a proton donor and an acceptor. Therefore, water is amphoteric in nature. What amphoteric means is that it can act both an acid and a base. The ionization constant of water is mathematically defined as K subscript W is equal to the product of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions and its value is 1.0 times 10 raised to negative 14 m. The ionization constant of water allows for the calculation of either the hydroxide or hydronium ion concentration when the other value is given. We just need to manipulate the formula in order to get the other value. Let us consider this example. Tatawagin ko na lang H3O ang hydronium ion at OH ang hydroxide ion. So first, we need to manipulate the equation in order to get the formula for OH. We divide both sides by H3O in order to get OH is equal to KW over H3O. Then we substitute the values in order to get 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 10 M. If we were to base on the definition of acids and bases by Arrhenius, we can then conclude that when there is more H3O than OH, the solution is described to be acidic. When OH is greater than H3O, it is basic. So in this solution that we got, we can describe the solution as acidic because the H3O value of 6.2 times 10 raised to negative 5m is greater than 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 10m. Now let's move on to pH. pH is an abbreviation denoting power of hydrogen or potential of hydrogen. It is a measure of how acidic or basic a solution is. P in pH refers to the power or exponent of the hydrogen ion concentration. This is the pH scale. A pH less than 7 is considered to be acidic. A pH of 7 is considered to be neutral. A pH higher than 7 is considered to be base or alkaline. This does not just talk about if a solution is an acid or a base. This also measures if how strong an acid or a base is. There are strong acids and strong bases. 
there are weak acids and weak bases. The pH of a solution is mathematically defined as the logarithm of the reciprocal of the H plus molar concentration. So we can further equate this to turn into pH is equal to negative logarithm of H plus. For alkaline solutions, it is more convenient to use the term POH, which is based on OH. So the formula is POH is equal to negative logarithm of OH. These are the two formulas that we need to remember. The relationship between pH and pOH can be derived from the equilibrium expression of the autoionization of water. So we can solve for this, but what's important is the final outcome of pH plus pOH is equal to 14. Therefore, the pH of a base can be computed by manipulating this equation. pH now is equal to 14 minus pOH. Let us consider two examples. So the first one is, calculate the pH of a solution with H plus is equal to 0 0.010 HCl. So that is our given. Now for the solution, first we write the equation, pH is equal to negative logarithm of H plus. Then we substitute the values in order to get pH of 2.00. Easy, right? So pH 2.00 is an acid. Now for our second example, calculate the pH of a 0.00015M NaOH solution. NaOH is a strong base and completely dissociates in water. For NaOH, OH is also 0.00015M because NaOH dissociates completely in water. So for the solution, we write the equation of P. POH is equal to negative logarithm of OH. Then we substitute the value in order to get negative logarithm of 0 0.00015. And then that becomes 3.82. But we're still not finished because we need to subtract it from 14 in order to get the pH. So that becomes 10.18 and that is a base. That is all. So that is all from me, and I hope I explained everything well. And it's up to the next presenter to continue this presentation. These are the references that I used in making this presentation. I do not claim ownership to any of the intellectual property that I used. Credits to all owners and authors of the information used. Hello, I'm Gerald Kudya. In this video, we're going to talk about electrolysis of water. Electrolysis is the process by which we use electricity to break down a compound to its component molecules. The electrolysis of water produces hydrogen and oxygen gases. The electrolytic cell consists of a pair of platinum electrodes immersed in water to which a small amount of an electrolyte such as H2SO4 has been added. The electrolyte is necessary because pure water will not carry enough charge due to the lack of ions. At the anode, water is oxidized to oxygen gas and hydrogen ions. At the cathode, Water is reduced to hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. In order to obtain the overall reaction, the reduction half reaction was multiplied by 2 to equalize the electrons. The hydrogen ion and hydroxide ions produced in each reaction combine to form water. The H2SO4 is not consumed in the reaction. So this is the electrolysis of water. 2H2O liquid produces 2H2 gas plus O2 gas. So this is an oxidation reduction process. So let's see which is being oxidized and which is being reduced. So let's write the oxidation numbers. These are the rules in writing the oxidation numbers. We can see here at the left side, hydrogen is plus one because it is paired up with non-metal. Oxygen is usually negative two. Then on the right side, hydrogen is zero because it is element by itself and oxygen is zero because it is element by itself so gain of electrons is the reduction loss of electrons is the oxidation from plus one to zero hydrogen is reduced so it gains electrons from negative two to zero 
oxygen is oxidized it loses electrons so this present doesn't happen on its own so this is not spontaneous so we need to use the electrical energy from a battery to force this happen so this is the device that we use in electrolysis of water this is a electrolytic cell we have a container with water and a test tube filled with water so ito test tube na to is nakabaliktad para yung hydrogen and oxygen gas na produce is pagkikip natin so this is these are the electrodes then we have a battery so electrolysis doesn't happen on pure water so we need to add some E2SO4 so that the electricity can flow into the water cathode is where reduction takes place anode is where oxidation takes place we can see here that this electrode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery then the positive terminal of the battery pulls the electrons this one electrode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery so the negative terminal of the battery pushes the electrons when the process starts we can see uh, bubbles so at the cathode hydrogen gas is produced at the anode oxygen gas is produced because oxygen here is being oxidized and here hydrogen is being produced so we can see that there is at least as much hydrogen gas as oxygen gas so bakit mas marami yung hydrogen gas kita sa oxygen gas so we can see in our equation that we have two moles of H H2 here and one mole of O2 here so the ratio is 2 is to 1 so that's why mas marami yung hydrogen is sa oxygen so let us see the half reaction so first let's see the reduction of hydrogen we started from 2H2O it produced H2 so here we can see that hydrogen is plus 1 so here hydrogen becomes 0 so bakit naging 0 to kasi hydrogen is reduced it gains electrons so the electrons are from the cathode and then yung natira na lang dito is yung OH which is the hydroxide ion so we can write the chemical equation for this so 2H2O it gains 2 electrons produce hydrogen gas and hydroxide ion so let's see the oxidation of oxygen we started from 2H2O produces oxygen gas we can see here that it becomes zero from negative two so because oxygen is being oxidized it loses electrons so yung natira na lang dito dahil tinanggal natin yung oxygen dito and oxygen dito natira na lang yung hydrogen ion so yung electrons dito is going to the anode so yan we can write the chemical equation 2H2O loses four electrons to produce oxygen gas and for hydrogen ion in chemical equation we cannot use subtraction sign so we need to correct it so this is the correct chemical equation for this so let us combine the half reaction and let us calculate the overall standard cell potential so this is our reduction and this is our oxidation the, let us determine the standard cell potential so here we reverse the oxidation to determine the standard potential of this then we got the standard cell potential of this it is positive 1.23 volts and here it is negative 0 0.83 volts so we have four electrons here and two electrons here so you multiply it by two so that we can equalize the electrons naging negative 1.23 volts na siya kasi nireverse natin siya so yung nireverse natin kasi siya yung oxidation and then ito yung result for H2O plus for electrons produce to H2 plus for OH so ito nagdidimine the same na lang siya and then we can cancel the electrons here and electrons here and then dito we combine the hydroxide ion and hydrogen ion so ito pinagplus natin naging 6H2O 2H2 plus O2 and then for OH plus for H plus naging water siya for H2O so ito yung standard cell potential niya so meron akong H2O on both side so I'll subtract for H2O here 
so that this will become cancel and we have 2H2O liquid here and it produces 2H2 plus O2 gas so this is the our overall reaction and this is the overall standard cell potential so that's all for the electrolysis of water thank you for listening good day everyone i'm Mullen Walsh Peterson from bscp one a today i'm going to report the topic about the water cycle source of water water contamination and water purification the water cycle water cycle describes how water evaporates from the surface of the earth rises into the atmosphere cools and condenses the rain or snow in clouds and falls again to the surface as precipitation. The water cycle is also known as the hydrologic cycle. It is a cycle that involves continuous circulation of water in the earth atmosphere system. These are the processes of water cycle. The first one is the evaporation, one of the major processes in the water cycle. It is a process where water at the surface turns into water vapors. In short, the liquid state will turn into gaseous or vapor state. Then the next one is the condensation. This is when water vapor in the air cools down and turns back into liquid water. In short, the gaseous or vapor state will turn back into liquid state. Then the next one is the sublimation. It is a process where ice directly converts into water vapors without converting into liquid water. Sublimation is lower than the evaporation. Then the next one is the precipitation. It is a process where water falls from clouds to earth's surface. So it is also known as the rain or the droplets. And then the next one is the transpiration. It is the evaporation of water to mean it pores or stomata in the leaves of plants. Then the next one is the runoff, the process where water runs over the surface of the earth. When the ice melts into water, it also leads to the runoff. And then the next one is the infil infiltration. It is the process by which water soaks into the ground. So if the water stays in the ground, it can absorb by the plants. And then if the water soak on un uh, deep underground, that what we call the groundwater. And then that's why we have the source of water. The next topic is the source of water. Water that we use for drinking, washing, agriculture, industry, and other more. There are two sources of water. First one is the groundwater. It refers to any source of water that lies beneath the soil layer. For example, the dog wells, drilled wells, and springs. Then the next one is the surface water. Surface water is the any source of water above the ground. Um, that includes oceans, lakes, ponds, and rivers. Our next topic is water contamination. Basically, contamination of water, or we can say water pollution. Safe drinking water is a critical component of human life, but pollution threatens many of our water supplies that can give us diseases, can harm us, or sometimes it leads to death. There are contaminants sub or substances, materials that can contaminate our water. First one is the heavy metals. Elements or compounds found in water supplies and maybe natural in geology are caused by activities of man through mining, industry, or agriculture. It is, a co it is common to have a trace amount of many inorganic contaminants and these are found in our bedrock. And then the next one is the nitrate and nitrite. So these are compounds that are present in chemical fertilizers, human sewage, and animal waste. So they can contaminate private well, source of water, groundwater, water seepage, and water runoff. And then the next one is the organic chemicals. These are carbons containing compounds that evaporate easily from water into air at normal air temperature. Organic contaminants are used as pesticides, defoliants, fuel additives, and as ingredients for organic compounds. And then the next one is the radionuclides. These are radioactive isotopes that can occur naturally or result from man-made sources. Natural radiation comes from the cosmic rays naturally occurring radioactive elements in the Earth's crust and radio active decay products. Typically, 
Radium no can found to in drinking water sources are isotopes of radium, uranium, and radon that are naturally occurring on our bedrock. Again, in, in the bedrock. And then the next one is the microorganism. Various, various types of virus are categorized pathogens. This is causing organism that can be found in pre-treated or inadequately treated water. So this that uh, what I said earlier that it can cause diseases. So other potential sources of water contamination include runoff from soil, air pollution, and automobile emissions, malfunctioning wastewater treatment system such as septic tanks, leaking underground storage systems and pipes, landfill leakage, radiation leaks from nuclear power plants. So our next topic is water purification. Water purification is the removal of contaminants. As as I've said earlier, the the material substances or yeah the contaminants that can contaminate our water. Contaminants from raw water to produce drinking water or clean water that we can use every day in our life. So there are four steps in water treatment used by community water systems. First one is the coagulation and flocculation. Second one is the sedimentation. Third one is the filtration and the fourth one is the disinfection. So the first one is the coagulation and flocculation. In this process, the particles bind with chemicals and form larger par particles that called flock. And then the next one is the sedimentation. In this process, the larger particles will settle to the bottom of the water supply. And then the third, third one is the filtration. In this process, once the flock has settled to the bottom of the water supply, the clear water on top will pass through filters of varying compos compositions, sand, gravel, and charcoal, and pore sizes. In order to remove dissolved particles such as dust, parasites, bacteria, and viruses and chemicals. So the last one is the dis disinfection. After the water has been filtered, a dis disinfectant or for example the chlorine may be added in order to kill any remaining parasites, bacteria, and viruses and protect the water from germs when it's piped to homes and businesses. There are other water purification techniques. First one is the boiling, second is the carbon filtering, and then third one is distillation, and then fourth one is the reverse osmosis, five is the ion exchange, and six is the electrode deionization, and then the seventh one is the, the use of iron in removing arsenic from water. And that's all for today. Thank you for listening and have a good day.